with you Candy here and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines and last time out we built this holiday park on the Nodeberg Ring Island and I think it came out pretty nice thank you so much for all of your support on that episode a heavy use of Green City's low density residential kind of gave this holiday park vibe which I think worked out pretty nicely a little bit of backyard detailing different size accommodation that sort of thing and then really like how this visitor centre main entrance area came out as well with the community pool integration and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, pleased with this build. Just one little fix that I did make was to add a security gate into this back entrance, which a couple of you mentioned. And I have also added in some death care over here too, because when I loaded back in, there were a lot of dead bodies waiting to be picked up from the holiday park. Not ideal. <laughs> And then on a stream, we did come in and create this pit stop park campsite over here for the Formula One track. And actually what it means is we now got quite a few people that are walking down the Formula One track and into this park. Actually, it slowed down a little bit from when I looked earlier. But yeah, really pleased with how this turned out. The little tent and car patterns repeated all the way along here. Half full campsite as if people are still arriving for their festival. And you will notice as well that I have completely changed this front entrance. So we had major traffic issues, largely caused by Sabrina Williams, of course, sinking her car into the road and blocking it. <laughs> but thanks to Ilka for the idea for the fix on that. But we did have parking lot roads in here and it just seemed to be causing loads of traffic still, even when we'd removed that block car. So I have completely changed this up and just plopped in these ploppable gravel car parking spaces here which has massively helped. So you can see the traffic's all cleared up. So it's all working a lot better like that. But again, thank you so much for all the support on that stream. It was, it was a really funny one. It was a really funny one. Thank you. Now for today, we are going to be turning our attention to one of the industries that we are yet to have in Oridon, and that is farming. So we're going to be coming in and filling in this space here with a substantial sized farm which hopefully will feed all of the 70 odd thousand people that are in Oridon at the moment. Although we did have a mini death wave before this, so I think it's about 65,000 at the moment. <laughs> so that's the plan for today. And of course for Oridon, I want to get all of the industries in. So we're still yet to have forestry as well. So we will be coming through and putting that in an episode soon. And I know loads of you are asking about the airport and do not worry, that is coming really soon. It will be coming in the next two or three maximum episodes. I've got a bit of holiday next week, so I need the time and attention that is going to be needed on that airport build because it is going to be a super long, prop heavy, detailed one. So I hope you guys could just bear with me a little bit longer on that, but it is absolutely coming. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's build. OK, so the first thing that I do want to do here is just change up this road network a little bit. So we'll just pause the game for a second and we're going to delete this road out here. We'll leave that one in for the time being and we're going to bring this out in a slightly different direction because what I want to do is have this flowing up more in this direction and connecting up to the highway over here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go on to freeform road tools for this and actually I think we will just bring this out straight just a little bit further like that and then we'll go into freeform and we'll just bend it. I'm just going to anarchy it in over the rail tracks for the moment and we'll sort that out later. So same goes for here. We'll just bring that in over. Turn off anarchy now so we don't get trees on the road. And then we'll keep this flowing up through this forested area here. And then on down towards the highway. So we'll just leave that there for a second. Now you've seen me do a lot of intersections over recent episodes. So I'm actually just going to skip over this one and enter one in now. And so there we go. I have just used our old familiar trumpet intersection, which I like so much. I think it just works pretty efficiently for a relatively small highway intersection like this. Got a little bit of intersection marking tool as always in just to make it prettier. But we could do with a bit more crash barrier detail and that sort of thing around it, which we can come on to later. So now heading back over to our farm district. Oh, and on the way, I have also just sunk the main intercity train lines underneath this track here. And we'll come back to this one in a second. But yeah, heading back over to our main farm area, we also have this road that we need to connect up. So this is a relatively important connection. It comes from the highway here. We also have direct access to the highway at this point, which is why I've chosen this spot for the farming industry, because it will have easy access to getting goods out and about and across the city through the highway there. 
But also because we do have the intercity rail here, I think bringing in a rail yard is going to be needed in this area. We've got the oil industry here, we've got farming here, and we're very likely to have forestry out in this area over here. So I think a rail yard would be really appropriate around all of these industry buildings. But this is also quite an important collector because of its links onto the highway the other side. So let's just continue this on. We'll go over the intercity rail here and we'll just bend it round actually following it quite closely to bring it into a junction this side. So I'm actually going to just move this node up a little bit so that we can connect it into that rather than... We, do you know what? We could remove a node here. We don't really need that one. Yeah, rather than creating another node connection there and messing up our bridge, I think we will do this. So let's grab that now and just bring that in there. And that works out quite nicely as a road alongside the railway track there. Of course, these need to sink in too, which we will do when we fix out this rail in a second. OK, so that gives us kind of our farming border here with the local railway running through it. So the first thing that I do want to do is put the main road that is going to flow through this area. And now the plan for this build is to create substantial amounts of fields all around here, dotted in with trees and kind of hedge patterns and path patterns within that as well. We'll also have the farmyard buildings dotted throughout the farmyard because I think that gives quite a nice effect. It can look like different farm areas within the larger complex, as it were, as opposed to one big farm in the middle and then vast fields around it. I think we'll spread it out like that. And that should make it more efficient in terms of transportation, getting the raw materials to the processing buildings and then the processing buildings out of the farm as well. But in amongst that, I would like to add just a little bit of residential and a little bit of housing, like a little local village in amongst the area. I've been having a lot of looks at Google Earth for this, and there's some lovely places in the British countryside which I'm taking inspiration from with for this. So yeah, we'll have a few houses dotted in and around this region. And so because of that, and to get workers to this area from the city as well, I would like to add in a train station. We're going to use the two-lane country road for this, which I'm loving at the moment. <laughs> I'm using it quite a lot. And we are going to hook it into this node here. We'll bring it straight just for a small section like that. And then we'll start to curve it around. So I think we'll have a bend, just a small bend like that. And then we'll bring it out straight again here where we can kind of line it with our village housing and that sort of thing. And then we'll go back into curvy roads because I think that feels quite appropriate for this sort of country style area. And then we'll just hook it into this collector this side. So that gives us double access to our farm over here. We'll also incorporate some more access points at various different locations as well. So it won't just be this. Let's just use a little bit of node controller on these nodes as well to make them look a little bit nicer. And traffic manager just to give ourselves dedicated turning lanes, which will help with the traffic here. So there we go. So in terms of the train station, now this rail is sunk in at the moment. And what we do want to do is make sure that it is sunk in this side. So I'm actually just going to grab that node there and we're going to line everything to the same height as over here. So let's actually grab all of our nodes using move it like that. And we'll just say snap to this height. And then, of course, what we do want to do is turn this into a bridge as well. So let's just grab that road. We'll go to race segment and find road tools and just upgrade that. Now we want to shift these nodes around a little bit so it looks a lot nicer than that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we also do need to be careful of clearance and height here. So the rail lines are cutting into that a little bit. So let's just lift those nodes up just a tiny bit to give ourselves some space for the rail there. So that'd be absolutely fine. And then we can just do a tiny bit of sloping on either side to smooth it out. So the other reason why I chose this area as well is because the ground is quite undulating. So we're going to get some nice hillside fields and that sort of thing in here, which will make it a little bit more difficult to work with with some of the larger farmyard assets. And in particular, putting in this station, we're going to have to slope the ground down right to the station, which is going to sit on this line because this is the internal train line. So we don't need a bypass or anything like that. So to get our train station in, let's just snap into the road guidelines of the train tracks for now. We'll create a nice straight line there. And then the station that I'm actually going to use is one of the workshop, which is essentially a simplified version of the vanilla train station. It's just a little bit smaller. See if we compare it. This one's a bit more grand and I don't really feel like it has the right vibe for a small 
village train station like this out in the countryside. So this is going to be the one that we are going to use. So let's just delete out these railway tracks there. I'll just pull these nodes back ever so slightly for the moment. So we can use that as a guideline. And then we'll grab our station and our road nodes here. And we'll just pull that back so that it lines up nicely with these tracks. So like that. And then let's, of course, make sure that it is the same height. And we'll slope the terrain up here to make a nice kind of pre-fall down to it. And then let's just connect in our tracks here. And what we can do as well is remove these extra nodes that we don't really need there. And that'll smooth out the tracks either side. So that should be relatively smooth coming in there. This one needs a little bit of, yeah, that's a bit better there. And that's absolutely fine, that side. So that'll be our station in. And then, of course, on our line, we can now add stops in. Although it won't be connected up to electricity or the road as of yet, but we can add stops in ready for that. So this train will now stop there on its way into the downtown. So it comes right from the Iron Grandpa district, stopping here, stopping in the Pink Lady Park there, and then on into the downtown. Should be a nice way to get people to and from their residences into the farming area and also the people that live in the village here out into the downtown and the wider city. So let's now grab terrain tools and what we'll do is we'll right click at the road here and then we'll just drag up from the station so we get a nice smooth slope up in front of it. Uh, and we'll need to do a couple of different ones of these as the terrain is slightly different height but then we can just go into our smoothing tools and smooth this all out so it looks a little bit more natural. So yeah like that should be absolutely fine. And what we can do here is just trim back these roads so it just aligns nicely in front of that station. It blends in quite nice there. And I will actually, in the interest of saving those, just remove that middle one that we no longer need. So yeah, I think that sits quite nicely as a station. Let's also bob off those trees for something a little bit better. So I think we'll change them. I think we'll change them for a horse chestnut. Yeah, the Mr. Maison horse chestnuts I think looks nice there. Now in terms of a road coming down to it, what I am going to do is grab the country lane again, but this time the one without the road markings. And we'll just bring down a nice small bendy road down to the station here. So we'll curve it round a little bit and then we'll just very simply, I think, connect it straight into the end here so that people can drive on in and round to the car park there. And then what we'll do is dot houses along here and have the kind of village centre be around this area. And actually to make it a little bit nicer, what we could do here is create a bit of a triangle. So let's just break off this piece of road here. We'll bring this out just a tiny bit further and then we'll snap it into the road either side like this. Which, yeah, just gives us this nice little sort of village centre triangle here, which we can do some nice greenery decorating in and that sort of thing. And then, yeah, let's just use a little bit of network multi-tool slope tool here to get this a bit nicer it's quite a steep slope down actually 8.6 percent winding down to the station there but yeah that'll be fine they'll be able to drive on that let's just tidy up that node as well okay so that is our train station in and connected and we will also bring a bus line into this area as well just a little local bus line i think will help with that public transportation too but next up we want to get our farm in so let's go ahead and paint an industry area and we will be using both the industry's dlc assets and also the vanilla growable farming assets as well for this. Because as mentioned previously on the other industries areas, you do actually need both. Buildings will look for farming products, which you can't get from the industries DLC. Those products just simply go towards making those unique assets, I believe, as far as I'm aware at least. So that is why we do want to have both of those in. And we want to make sure we have some farming raw materials as well as those processing processing buildings just from the, the base game industries as well. But yeah, there we go. So we will be covering quite a substantial area today with all of our fields and the such like. So the next thing we want to do is have a little look at resources. Now you can see there is quite a lot of farming already in here, but there's also some forestry. So we'll just get rid of that. I'm going to get our forest brush on. I'm going to make sure that lock forestry is off. Because otherwise, when we delete these trees, that forestry area, the ground sort of forestry area stays and then we cannot put farming on top of it. So it's quite an annoying mechanic, actually, when you're playing in vanilla, because once you place some trees down, it deletes out your farming area and you literally can never get it back if you're in vanilla. 
So if we go back here now, you see that forestry area is now completely gone. So what that means is that we're, then we can take our mod here for additional natural resources and we can start to paint in the entire thing with farming. And I am literally going to do the whole of this area to make sure that we have enough resources for wherever we are plopping our fields down. So we'll do it just like that. Now it looks like there's a tiny bit of forestry here. So what we can do is just plop in some forest. Maybe it's the fact that these trees are a little bit close there. So let's just get rid of those for a sec. And then we'll go back into resources. Yeah, and we can paint up our farming almost closer to the edge at least. So yeah, there we go. So that will cover the whole area. Now I want to have a large-ish farmyard where we put our main farm building. So just looking at the terrain on this as well, we do have this one really flat space over here and also quite a lot of flat land this side. And then this bit is very hilly. So here we want to be doing lots of fields and I will have a couple of buildings intermingled within it because I do think it looks quite nice and it'll just have to work with the terrain a little bit to ensure that they're nicely placed and things aren't looking too janky. But we'll place the main farm building over this side. So what I'll do is grab our country road again and just bring that out straight like this. Then we're going to curve it round because what we will have is a few houses in front of the farmyard and the farmyard set just a little bit further back. So we'll bring that out like that and then we'll go ahead and place in our main farm building right about here. And that of course then unlocks everything. Now because I've got unlock all on uh, so that I could pick and choose assets that I wanted, which I did later on in the game, I have got access to all of the farming buildings, so we won't be working up through the levels. We will be essentially cheating a little bit and placing some of the higher level buildings earlier on. For example, the slaughterhouse. But ordinarily, if you haven't got unlock all on, you'll just have access to a certain few assets to begin with and then work your way up through those levels. So yeah, this farming building is super cute and it does change as the levels go up. So we'll keep an eye on that and see how we can work that into the detail then. I'll just bring out this road slightly further because what I do want to do after this is then turn it into more gravel roads and the gravel roads are really what we're going to be using to frame around our farmland. Let's just bring that up the side of this building here and I want to just make sure that that is pushed up nice and close to that edge there and then what we'll do is start to bring out a farmyard in this area. Now the biggest of the farming industry buildings is the slaughterhouse and this one, I think the asset orientation of this is actually really quite important because it's quite a grand building when we have a little look at it. Like it's really nice up against roads. It almost looks like it could be a cattle market, to be honest to me, like one of those sort of auction places. So, yeah, we want to make sure that this has got like kind of pride of place almost in terms of orientation. So I'm going to place it on this main junction here. We'll just drag it away a little bit so that the terrain isn't pushing up the fences there. We'll have a slight gap. In between the road and it just so we can have a couple of little bits of foliage i think would just decorate up that edge nicely but we definitely want to be able to see that from the road like that so in terms of access let's just grab our country lane again and we'll bring this out straight in front of the building here so let's actually just turn off snapping for this so we can get it out nicely in front like so and then what we will do we'll turn snappy back on go back to freeform and we're going to curve this on up over into this road so again I'll just bring this out straight here what we want to do is try and get some nice bends in this so I'm actually just going to snap into the road guidelines of the train track here because what I think would be nice is to have some fields running right up against that so let's have a small straight portion there and then we can just do some nicer bends to connect these in there so I think like that will be fine I will actually just break this and smooth this out a little bit because that was a bit of a harsh bend for getting those tractors round. Yeah, there we go. So that gives us our position of our slaughterhouse with that three road access through to the farm over this side as well. And what we might do is actually convert part of this road into a gravel road here. So we will just upgrade this section all the way up to the edge of the slaughterhouse there into gravel so that it shouldn't be a main route round for any trucks. I mean, obviously they will still consider it because this is the city's guidelines, but that's what we're going to try and encourage by the look and feel of it. Now, in terms of a little farmyard over here, there's a few assets I'd like to incorporate into that. Now, the flour mill is quite large and we're probably going to want a few of them as well. So I think this will be the first one that we'll put in and I will actually... I think orientate it like that. So we've got this fence up alongside the road and when you're coming into the farm you see these big 
grain containers in the front there which i think looks nice and then we also have the milking parlor as well which i definitely want to incorporate so we will align this now just to fit that in a little better i'm actually going to move this up slightly and then this one can sit quite nicely against that road and then what we can do with our little gravel road is come in with a road through the middle here and just open it up around into there and we can place some more assets through in the back so we do also have the cattle shed which is a nice large building which we can definitely incorporate into our farmyard out here which i think we'll just bring alongside the milking parlor like that and then taking a look at the assets that are available in the vanilla farming there are some really really nice barns in this that i'd like to incorporate as well Let's go ahead and place a few of these in. And what we want to do is create a really large farmyard in the middle of this area, like a big yard space that we can then detail up with lots of farmyard style props and the such like. So, yeah, I think a few of these will look nice in and around it. And we'll want to do a bit of bob work, I think, to get rid of those vanilla trees. So let's actually just remove all of the trees on all of these buildings for now. So like that. And I think what we will do is keep little gaps in between them rather than doing any merging here. So it's separate farmyard units and the such like. And what I'd actually quite like to do with this, I think, is bring it out diagonally this way, which will give another access point into the farms over this side. So you could drive between these buildings and come out the other side. And now in terms of detailing, we are going to want to bob off these parking spaces, which just do not feel appropriate in the middle of a farm. <laughs> so we will go ahead and do that in a second but let's definitely gravel over this whole area and actually I'm thinking with this road now as well it looks pretty strange with the road running through the farmyard so I'm just going to see what we can do in terms of covering that up and I'm thinking yeah this track one might be a bit better because then we do have decals that we can use to help blend this in so we've got these big mud decals which we can use either side of that just so it looks slightly, slightly less obvious. And yeah, we can blend it in over the top as well and make sure we've got prop anarchy on for this. What that'll start to give us is quite a nice muddy farmyard type vibe, which I don't mind too much. And it does, yeah, cover up the kind of obviousness that is that road, which is exactly what we wanted to get rid of here. Now, before I forget, let's definitely bob off these parking spaces because we just don't want those. Yeah, I think that that is starting to look quite nice like, like that with all the decals. They are kind of glitching out a little bit all over the top of each other, so I might have to sort that out. But yeah, it definitely looks like a farmyard to me, and it's getting more of that rural vibe in it. And we'll obviously come in in the detail in time lapse and add, add lots of fences and lots and lots of farmyard props around here to really flesh out this area and make it feel alive and much more realistic. But for now, that will do for that space. So next up, what I do want to do is come through and place in as many fields as possible around this area. Now I am using some fields off the workshop, which is Maximilian's Farm Industries field assets, which will be a link in the description below. And what we'll do is place in lots and lots of fields around here, but we will be leaving odd gaps, which I will come through and show you ways in which we can fill those later on. And also, of course, leaving space in for our housing around our village as well. So I'll just jump into that time lapse and I'll be right back.
no, so there is a lot of fields in here and I think I, I did originally have Rebalance Industries on and I took it off because I was trying to clean up my mud list a little bit. I may have to put it up back on with farmland because the amount of trucks that are coming in and out is just pretty unrealistic. But there's no traffic backing up at the moment. We've got several entries and exits into the farmlands all over. And yeah, I've just dotted in a few of the processing and storage buildings in amongst all of the others, along with a bit of vanilla. As mentioned, important to get the vanilla raw materials and the processing buildings in here as well. So we have got a few of those dotted around. Yeah, quite pleased with how it has all come together. These large fields are just amazing. And when we add in the detail, and we're going to be adding in lots of tree lines, I've added in a few pathways like this, which will cover up with quite a lot of trees. Like they're not intended to be used. They're just meant as a sort of boundary next to the fields where tractors or trailers or the such like could easily come up and tend to whatever field it is that they're tending to. But yeah, I think it's come together quite well. And we've got lots and lots of odd spaces in here that we will need to fill with detailing. So what we will be doing is coming through and putting in some kind of artificial animal fields. We'll be using ruined texture and some of the animal spawners to place in more cows and the such like into different areas. We'll also come through with some kind of bush patterns as well to make them look a little bit like the vegetable fields that we have. Some of over here, we'll try and kind of replicate that sort of thing in some of the smaller areas and some of the odd spacing because we can do that with the lights of prop line tool. And we've used lots of variety of fields too. We have got a few trees in here. We may have an orchard somewhere else in Oridan. But I think this the, the main focus is this was certainly farmland, fields, different crops and the such like, and just a little bit of animal pastures in there as well. But the next thing that I do want to do is come through and add in our little small village. So we're going to place some low density residential down for this. And there's certain assets that I want to use. I want to be quite picky about this and about their location. And all of this is really going to come together in the detailing, I would add. So adding in little kind of trees and, and boundaries to each of these houses as opposed to them just sitting randomly against this road. But the types of houses, I definitely want to use a few of these. I think these ones look quite nice. This one in particular as well. And what we can do is just make these into very small houses local to the farm. Kind of funny different angles is what I want to go for here. So we can have that driveway meeting the road but set off at a slight angle. Just lift that up a little bit and thankfully all the fields conform to the terrain so it ends up looking quite nice like that this one needs to come down a bit as well got a bit of terrain detailing jankiness that we can do there cover up with a bit of detailing but this is the type of thing that we want to do along this road so we could venture into a little bit of european suburbia here too which i think could be quite cute for some of these houses some of these are quite similar and go into really nice patterns with the hedges as well Kind of frames a nice rural little road there but we don't want to go too heavy on that i don't want the overall theme to be european suburbia here we do of course want to add in a park somewhere as well i'm thinking we'll probably use the little few c park for this which i think is probably going to be the easiest thing for here so i might plop that in there for now it's on quite a slope <laughs> maybe if we drop it down one more step actually it'll be a little bit easier here we could always flatten out the terrain a little bit which I have done in places here to make it a little bit easier for those houses going in. Yeah, we'll just do that and then we can drop the house down on the level next to it. So some of these smaller European suburbia would probably look quite nice here. And also because they're quite narrow, some of these, they'll step down really nicely on a slope, which is what we want. So if we just go to houses which are too wide, yeah, you see, we can see these ones work quite nicely. That's maybe a little bit big for here. So let's get rid of that. A little repeated pattern of these ones I don't think we're going miss there and in fact let's try and line up some of these hedges as well so it makes it a bit nicer on the detailing so we can give that a nice corner effect there we can line this one up so that front hedge merges in and here we don't need to worry about it as much actually because there's not a hedge on the same side so we can come through with a bit of hedge detailing to tidy that up yeah I think that's starting to look quite nice up that hill there we go back up to here i do want to add in a couple of services so one of them is actually the post office which i have ignored for quite some time so i think we'll have a couple of little shops around this square just something really small and neat just a bit of convenience that sort of thing so maybe a little garage actually wouldn't go amiss here i think what we might do actually is have that on that corner before you go down into the farm there 
And then we really just want one small convenience shop here, which I think will be plenty. So this one actually would not maybe not go too badly next to the post office there. And again, we'll need a bit of surface painter just to tidy up this area. Oh, not that much. <laughs> Turn that brush strength down. Yeah, we can just join that up and make a little bit of a pedestrianised area around the square there. And then we'll go back to houses here and we want them pretty spaced out. We want that real country vibe to this. This one's fairly rural as well. I think we can get away with this with being sort of a slightly country house yard. And with these, when we come to do the detailing, what we want to do is just make sure we're adding in little driveways, which are appropriate for it. So we can come in with a bit of surface painter that obviously needs tidying up with brush tool. But something along those lines just to give that a driveway would be nice and actually what we can do is because the surface painter has gone in quite nicely like that let's line this house up with that surface painter and that gives quite a nice driveway in there and again a bit of detailing around here will tidy that up okay so there we have just plopped in a few more houses just around this village square here and going down this hill as well just using some of those smaller houses i think this gives quite a really quite nice little village vibe here going down the hill looking over onto the crop fields and the big silos and stuff in the background yeah I'm liking how it is coming together. We need an awful lot of detailing around this, though, to make it all blend in and fill in all these gaps around the field so it makes a bit more sense. But the final thing that I do want to do is add in services. Now, I have plopped in a little elementary school already. Now, I always say the car park needs to be against the road, but here it's just not going to work. So what I will do is bring the fence around and make it so that you sort of drive in and park on the side of it here. And we need to level out the ground a little bit there as well just to help that out. But we do need fire, police and medical as well. So that is what we're going to plop in next. And I am actually just going to plop medical and police down by the train station here. As I feel like that's probably the most appropriate place for it. So it's a little bit more built up. Now with the fire station, I am actually going to place that slightly out of town. And I'm thinking what I'll probably do is actually put it on this corner here next to this field. So that it is... Kind of just on the outskirts of the little village, but still within reach. So it's kind of a shame that we don't have a more rural fire station asset for this. But this one fits in a little bit better, I think, than this. This is, tends to be what I use in the rural build, but it's quite actually quite big. This is a little bit smaller, I think, blends in a bit better. And of course, the other thing we do want is death care. So we do want a crematorium in here somewhere. And I'm thinking what I'm actually going to do is just set it back on this field road back here behind these houses. We'll just push it back right up to there. And what we will actually do because of that is just upgrade this first section of road to the rural road here. So that starts to make a little bit of sense. And then with this node as well, if we just change this to custom, yeah, that will blend in a little bit better there. And then what I might do is actually just close that gap slightly because it doesn't need to be quite as big a transition. Yeah, that works out. And we'll just pull that up slightly closer to the crematorium like that. And let's just pull that back so we don't have the pavement on the other side of the road there. So yeah, lots of detailing to come in here to tidy up these banks. Help this area a little bit. I'm thinking a bit more parking maybe at the end to slot in. Some benches as well, something to make this a little bit more of a kind of town centre area. We'll definitely want to decorate up the main triangle here in the centre of the village with the little shop and the post office there too. And then there's an awful lot of detailing to do across the fields. <laughs> so as mentioned, all the trees filling in the gaps with different patterns, whether it be fake animal fields or whether it be fake little vegetable patches using tiny little bushes in rows, that sort of thing. That is what we are going to come in and do now. And of course, we also need to decorate all of our little extra farmyards here. Lots of farmyard props into our main farmyards here as well. Fencing and the such like to finish it off. So this is going to be quite a long detailing time lapse. But I'll jump into it now and I'll be right back.
so there is an awful lot of detailing in this that you guys will not have seen because it pretty much as always i bit off more than i could chew with this build and it took an awfully long time so let's just go round, shall we now looking at the train track firstly you won't have seen this i have just added in undergrowth all the way along this which i thought gave quite a nice effect as we come up to the station and I actually changed this bridge over for a tunnel as well, which, again, looking at Google Earth, there's lots of little tunnels as you go through the British countryside, so I thought that was quite nice there. Yeah, just full undergrowth all the way up, I think, gives it a nice little look. And as we come onto the fields, you will have seen lots of tree patterns all around the field edges, just giving us some borders, again, very much like what we see in the British countryside there. And some of them are kind of overhanging onto the roads as well, which I actually don't mind. It's kind of the effect that I wanted. I wanted kind of really overgrown country roads, like the cars still don't knock into them or anything like that. Random taxi driving down here. But it, yeah, it gives that kind of proper farm feel, I think. These are not roads that any old person should just be driving on. And yeah, and our wheat fields, where we've got the cut wheat, I have just done a few little bales of hay in random places and then just coming over here this is probably one of my favorite things in the whole build this is little hay bale stack here which i think turned out quite nicely i've tried to make it all not uniform and not perfect some of these nice mud puddle details in front and a couple of bits of farm machinery i think adds a nice effect there and we did continue on this path up that way and i'm kind of using these paths as imagining that the farm vehicles would use them as access to different fields so they are dotted around throughout the map and then coming on over here, I have just added in a couple more houses actually next to the little farm barracks here. So all of the housing, we have actually given them all hedge borders, I think, just to show the boundaries of them. Um, so I think that's quite nice tucked away on this little country road back there. And I have just put in another one this side, slightly larger house with its own driveway with the hedges, a couple of car props out there. And then, yeah, a bit of a larger garden for this one, a couple of flowers and a little swing out there. And then we have just made all the farm yards, got rid of all of the concrete, added in some mud decals there just to make it feel much more realistic farmyard like. Lots of tree patterns as we would have seen before. And then in this little farmyard here, yeah, just added in a few extra props really, nothing much, like an extra digger over here, tractor with the sacks in it. A couple of extra sack props lying around as well just to fill out the area. Little random trailers here or there, that sort of thing, just to bring a little bit of life to some of our farmyards. Down in the village, I did add in another car park here, a little bit of fence bordering as well to kind of give this area a bit of a frame. And again, more of that overgrowth to hide that cliff rock textures there. And then coming up the hill in the village again, like I said, I have just given back gardens to all of these houses, which I think made it feel a little bit more appropriate. And then filling in awkward spaces, one of the things that I have done is used a few more fruit trees, so apple trees in this instance, just fenced in there, just to fill in some of those slightly awkward spaces around our fields. Another one over here, big fruit field there in this kind of random shaped pattern around the field, extra little storage barn as well. And then yeah, it's just more houses dotted around with their own hedge borders. And then we have done this design in a couple of places, which is kind of meant to look like a vegetable patch or a vegetable growing field, something along those lines, just using lots of small bushes. And there are a few of those around. So we did another one over here, actually leaving borders in between them, a few mud decals underneath just to rough up that gravel texture as well, make it feel a bit more realistic. But I think it has come out nicely like that. Then over in the big farmyard, we have just added in a few more prop machineries and such like, actually a little recycling centre back here so that we've got rubbish services around this area because it was starting to pile up just a little bit. And then there are quite a lot of fake animal fields. So we've used an animal spawner, which you can find in my asset list, to plop in some, well, these are highland cows actually in this instance. And I like how it's kind of turned out. We've got these little gate assets that you can find on Find It, make a nice entrance to these fields. I mean, the cows could definitely escape from that one. <laughs> and I have just changed this up around here, covered up the road with a mud decal, which I think makes a nicer entrance there. And it's sort of framed with this gravel driveway all the, ra all the way around, which I think looks quite nice. And then coming over this side, again, all of our houses have gardens, as mentioned. And we've got this nice sheep field over here, which I really like. Again, just using a tractor prop with some sacks in the back of it. We've got sheep escaping through the fences. Uh, yeah, that's not meant to happen. <laughs> well, the gate is open, to be fair. But yeah, I think this has turned out quite nice. Just a few random bushes in this really large sheep field here. And yeah, a little bit of ruined texture, just to make it feel a bit more realistic. 
and we have used some other spaces this is actually vanilla farms in here so if i come in you can see this is all lots of buildings placed into this field and then just using surface painter with the field texture just to fill that all in and make it smooth and we have got some imt fencing quite a lot of it actually around the place so i didn't want to use the extra load so this is actually all imt'd onto the road and just made to line up with the edge of the cow field over here yeah lots of mud decals around like outside this barracks we've got this really cute little path here running out through the fields and actually when someone does walk down here this is a really nice first person perspective walking all the way up through the fields and this path carries on over through the potato fields here next to this little pig field as well so we have got more animal fields i do like this little tractor detailing over here as well and actually one trick that i kind of only discovered recently is you can find the grass and the rocks from the nature reserve path in find it if you search for path ironically and that just really helps to like smooth out some of the edges of surface painted areas and make it feel a little bit more realistic and overgrown and this is one of my favorite areas here this little pig pen again using the pig spawners walking through the fences as always but actually using just a farm industry building here and it's quite a large building but we've bobbed off some of the fencing around it and it fits quite nicely into the corner like a little pigsty there again lots of mug details to help with the realism and over here again much of the same lots of props putting some silage here some sacks extra barrels crates tractors farm machinery all sorts down the side here as well so just to give a little bit of realism to this area and then the final little farm build over here again i think came out quite cute again it's much of the same and this is the vanilla farm raw materials fields there as well with bobbed off fencing bobbed off bushes and actually it looks really quite nice i think like that and fits in well but yeah all in all that is it um so i'm actually really pleased with how this area has turned out it's quite a substantial size so when we zoom out in Oridon, it's really nice to have those colourful farm fields now on the outskirts. I'd love to have a few more places with those, but we'll see how we do in terms of the size of the city. But yeah, really pleased to get our farm build in. And one final thing to note is that we have reached level five, like quite substantially as well. We're making an awful, awful lot of product here and an awful lot of money, which is helping the Oridon budget finally. We are a little short on workers, but actually looking at our demands, it's relatively balanced, which is exactly what I want to see. So I'm thankful for that. We have got more residents in here and obviously all of the jobs. And also to correct my earlier statement, I realised I had kept three balanced industries on. So that was already on. In fact, there's just an awful lot of trucks because there's an awful lot of fields in this area. So the final thing I do want to do is give this area a name and any of you who were on a stream quite a while ago will remember a very very generous super chat from someone called Jennifer Farmer and we did say at the time we would call the farm Jennifer Farmer's Farm so that is what we are going to do so there we go we have got Jennifer Farmer's Farm thank you so much for your incredibly incredibly generous super chat donation Jennifer and I hope you enjoy your farm but that is going to be it from me for today. If you have enjoyed the video, likes below, comments and shares are all really, really welcome. Get your suggestions in for other builds that you'd like to see in Oridon in future as well. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and I will catch you again next time. Bye bye.